Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I have yet another product review for you. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Elgato Game Capture, if I can get that close enough to be seen. Probably completely out of focus still. I put it up on Twitter and I asked you guys if you wanted a new in-depth or if you wanted to review the Elgato and surprisingly you said Elgato. I thought you'd be up to your ears in product reviews but you wanted to hear what I had to say about it. So here we are. This is the capture card. This is your $160 well spent right here. Very simple little box. Uh, it doesn't look like much but let's skip to the gameplay that I recorded for it so you can see the kind of quality that it has. Like all reviews, it's very important to discuss agency issues up front. I am not paid for this review, not a single dollar, and I am not sponsored by Elgato. We have no formal, legal binding agreements of any kind, and I make zero dollars from this other than the little ads that pop up on the screen, but that would be any other video anyway. I was required to do this review in order to receive the capture card for free. That being said, I didn't have to do a good review. It was kind of like the deal with Scuff Gaming. If I didn't like the capture card, I was free to blast it into oblivion. I liked, I mostly liked it, but there's some things that I'm going to blast, so there's not going to be any coupon codes or hard selling or anything like that. This is a legitimate, unbiased review. The thing that you probably noticed about the gameplay is that instead of using quirky guns, which I usually do, I'm using the ACR and MP7 and tryhard panties kind of guns and camping like a douchebag. That was because I was worried about input lag. Some capture cards, when you pass through them, there's like this half second, quarter second of lag as they pass through, so it makes it really, really hard to game. So I just got my tryhard guns out so it wouldn't get smashed. Thankfully, this was, as advertised, a zero input lag device. It just passes straight through, no delay or anything, so that was really great. And after I've definitely proved that to myself, and and die, I put my tryhard self up and go back to some thermal LSW and quickscoping, which you'll see in a little bit. If you haven't already done so, I would highly recommend you click the 1080p button, 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 button in the bottom right hand corner and uh, play this video in its maximum potential. If you're working on a smaller device, that's fine, but if you have a 1080p monitor, I would recommend it because this is a 1080p capture card. It legitimately captures in 1080p, not 1080i, not 1080i upscaling, not anything but actual 1080p 30 FPS through the HDMI which is really really great however it only currently does this on Xbox as of making this video like two minutes before I sat down to record this session a subscriber tweeted to me and said that Elgato pushed through a patch that should allow 1080p or HDMI recording on PlayStation 3 Previously, the HDMI did not work on the PlayStation 3 because the PlayStation 3 has encrypted HDMI. It has HDCP or high definition copyright protection to prevent piracy for Blu-rays. And if you're a company like Elgato, you have to pay to get that encryption fee and negotiate something out, which I guess they did because if the subscriber, what he told me is true and you can do 1080 HDMI on PlayStation, that'd be really, really great. Um, anyway, moving on, it's a really, really big benefit to me because I can finally game in 1080p. Previously, I was gaming in 720p on a 1080 TV so it was stretching it a bit the colors weren't natural because it was analog but now I'm back to proper 1080p digital gaming and I'm really really happy because I can use my TV to its full potential and it helps me see people a little bit further away not like the biggest difference but it's it's really nice if you want to see the difference in recording quality I'm gonna split the screen now the screen is now split uh, with the Elgato on the left and the HD PVR on the right. This is the HD PVR 1, mind you. This isn't the new HD PVR 2, which has some sort of HDMI recording. I haven't used that yet. And you can really, really see the difference, especially if you've got the video in 1080p. You can see the difference between uh, 1080 and 720p. On lower resolutions, you're probably going to be seeing less of a quality difference, but you're just going to have to trust me that it's there. One of the strong points of this capture card is how easy it is to set up. I'm going to show you exactly how long it took for me to set this one up. Here's Here's the capture card. This would be a cable from my game console. It goes in the HDMI in. So, boop, that's done. There's only two on the other side. This one goes to my TV, so that's done. And uh, wrong end of the cable. This one here is my USB, so that'll play nice with the computer. I'll hook that in, and we'll go ahead and plug this one up to the computer. And it's done. It's ready to go, and it's installing, and it's already sending signal to your TV, and that's all you really needed to set it up. I was really impressed by this. Every time I get a capture card, it's something impossible. Random error reference 05371, tech support's never heard of it. This one, it was actually plug and play for once. It's not always like that. I know some people have bad setups or some sort of unusual problem, but this one was really, really easy to set up for me. It also has, if you can see, and it's not too out about it, uh, an audio video port, the little round one, if you're running on component cables on an older TV, but if you're doing that, you probably really don't need this capture card. The strength of this thing is the HDMI. Uh, some capture cards, people complained about them sliding around, so they had a kind of unusual thing here. 
if you can see the little uh, black paddles, that's little foamy grips so that it doesn't slide around while sitting on your desk. It probably cost them two cents, but it was a nice little feature. I would say that the video recording quality for this capture card is very high. It does 1080p and 30fps. No 60fps on the 1080p, that's just a physical hardware limit because it still runs on old USB 2.0 ports so that it's compatible with every single computer. If we're doing 3.0, we can do it easily, but on 2.0, that's pretty much just the like a physical limit set by the chemistry of the, of the materials that connect to each other. You can't transmit any more data than that, so it's absolutely maxing it out very good, very high bit rate, very clear, crisp image. I found that the colors were very good on my TV, but very flat on my capturing card. It comes with some default options that I can change the saturation, the hue, the brightness, that sort of stuff. I generally don't do that because I can do it in post in Sony Vegas or Adobe Premiere, but if somebody was not as experienced as myself in these things, that would be a very nice option to have. While we're on the subject of recording videos, one of the biggest and nicest features for this capture card, other than the 1080p, is what I call ghost recording. Or I don't really call it ghost recording. J-Hub made it up. It kind of stuck. They call it flashback recording. I call it ghost recording. Whenever you plug the device into your computer, it's basically recording as long as your computer's on. And and instead of like a PVR or anything else where you have to hit start, stop, start, stop, and restart your recording whenever you want to record something, it's just always on and it's always recording. And when you get a clip that you like or a game that you like, there's a little track selector. You just select the times that you like and click the buttons and it trims it and exports it for you into a video. Pretty much good to go and that's a very nice feature to have because I don't have to constantly get up from my chair and click clack click clack and go back and forth and worry if it's running or not. It's just always running and I don't have to worry about it. Let's talk about some bad things for this capture card. One of the major bad things is that it is an MP4 only capture card. The only files that you can use are the MP4 files. It exports to MP4 and MP4 only. There's no AVI, there's no MOV, there's no WMV, there's no nothing but MP4. Sony Vegas historically did not get along very well with MP4 files, so it strains my computer a bit to edit and work with these, but the overall quality is great. MP4 is my final destination file. That's pretty good. I can't really use the RAW files. I could record RAW files with my uh, digital camera, my DSLR, the Hophog HT PVR. There's something funny about the RAW files that the Elgato records that I can't really access them well. In Vegas, only the video shows up and not the audio. I haven't tried in Adobe After Effects or anything. I'm sure there's a workaround for this, but it just was not very convenient. And the RAW files are huge, so they don't read that well on the disc or in Sony Vegas anyway. By the way, did I mention the RAW files are huge? and then it records constantly. I mean, I know that I said that was one of the good things, but the raw files can get upwards of lower 20, 30, 40, 50 megabytes before you know what you're doing. So if you leave the thing on recording, you can fill up your entire disk space very, very quickly. Just if you left it on for like two or three hours, God, I'd hate to see what happens. That's why I make it a point not to turn it on until I'm ready to record. And then I just let it run, run and uh, trim my clips from there. But it can seriously hog your disk space if you're not careful. And speaking of hogs, it is a huge system hog. The Elgato software is demanding. It doesn't, um, how would I say... It doesn't go easy on my PC. It's pretty mean on the old girl. It uses a good bit of RAM. It uses a good bit of processing power. I can't uh, render videos or run multiple things in the background. And there's a known error with it that can cause it to leak and for some reason start recording videos to your RAM. It, don't, it won't crash your computer or kill it, but it'll put like... 8, 10 gigabytes worth of stuff on your RAM and hog all of it. If you have an old PC, if you have a laptop, if your MacBook is like just not very well built, then you probably don't want this capture card because it will just barely, barely run. This is for people that have good computers, nice, new, one, two years old tops. I wouldn't really want to run this on an old computer. There is another negative issue, and that's that it has questionable live streaming properties. None of the external capture cards that I know of have a good live streaming service. I know that the Roxio one has a supposedly built-in one to Twitch. I haven't tried it yet. I'll try it some other time if I get the thing. But this one, you can't live stream that well with. I actually got a beta because they have a beta version that's supposed to be easier to live stream with. As it comes right now, what you'll get if you go and buy this today is a standard preview window with no live streaming option. You'll have to do exactly what I do with my HD PVR, which is screen capture a region. So I have another program constantly screen capturing my Elgato, which is a huge resource hog. 
And then there's like a three or four second delay on the preview window on my computer, which makes it hard to live stream because if something awesome happens and I want to scream or be excited, I have to sit there and wait and try and time it with the preview window and it's really crappy. But you could run a virtual audio cable around that and then do something weird with your webcam. It just gets too complicated. I don't want to fool with it. I talked to the guy that sent me this from their uh, like marketing program because they send these out to me to market my review, even though I'm not being paid for it. It's essentially free marketing. And he sent me a beta version of their software, which included a live commentary mode, which I actually kind of liked. That was that was good. I'll say that was legit. And it had a Twitch TV mode, which I really wanted to try out. I have a Twitch account. I don't stream there very much, but I set it up. I put in my optimal settings. And one of the things I noticed right off the bat is that I have to select a third-party server. I can't just stream straight to Twitch like I used to. I have to actually select a server to stream through. And for some reason, the bandwidth on these is really, really funny. I streamed at one megabit, and it was really, really laggy. I put a link in the description to that live stream so you can see exactly how it worked. My audio bounced around a little bit. It did some funny things. The quality wasn't that great. For some reason, it just didn't really work out. I lagged. The quality wasn't good. It was demanding on my computer. I could do better on my own streaming to YouTube through XSplit or through my old PVR. And when I do live stream now, I'm going to use the old PVR. I use this one to record videos, but when I live stream, I'm going back to the PVR because that was convenient. The live streaming feature is, yes, still in beta. You can't use it. Maybe when it comes out, it'll be better. Maybe after a couple itinerations, it'll be better. Right now, I just don't really like it. Then again, I'm probably shouldn't be streaming on external devices anyway. I should have a internal card. One of the neat things though is that it has a built-in audio cable to it such that I don't have to worry about voice delay. It handles all that for me so it's all my voice matches live. It's really nice. There are a few intangibles to this one. That being said, it needs a USB 2.0 power source to operate. If it's not plugged into something, it won't work. That means it needs to be plugged into a PC that's either turned on or a PC that has HDMI power pass through setup. For as long as the computer has power, it'll power HD, not, not HDMI, my bad, USB devices or a USB wall charger or maybe plug it into your Xbox if that won't cause some sort of weird interference. It just needs an external power source. That's kind of a good and a bad thing. I wish it ran on uh, maybe HDMI 3.0, which has power built into it, but not many things are compliant with that. So I understand there's right there. The software that comes with it is set up very well. It's easy to use. All of the default options are great. That's not normally the case with other uh, software setups. You have to spend a lot of time optimizing them. This is one of the few things I got that was pretty much good to go out of the box, but there aren't many options. Other programs tend to have lots and lots and lots of options and lots of things for me to do. And as a tech guy, as an engineer, as a guy who has stuff that never works quite right, that's a big deal for me. Maybe not for you guys, but I wish there were more options. That would be nice. Other file types to record through audio options, just more. But as it's set up now, it works great for me and I really shouldn't be complaining. <coughs> Ooh, complaining about it. Another intangible, it has an editing software suite. I would be totally lying if I said I used it. I like my Sony Vegas. I don't care what they're offering. My Sony Vegas is superior. I'm not changing. When I got the Elgato capture card, I was a little bit confused. I was like, where the hell are my installation CDs? Where are my drivers? I don't understand this. Where's my product activation key? Elgato really just decided to go simple. They gave me this little uh, pamphlet. And if you read it, it's got a little URL down there in the bottom. It tells me to go to their site and download all of the software. It's all for free. And it had a little setup guide on the back. I didn't really need that. But all of their software is online. It updates automatically. You don't need CD keys or any of that, which is convenient in a way that I can just go and download anytime, whatever version, whenever I need it. But it's inconvenient in another way. If I'm somewhere offline where I can't access the internet or I need a new fresh install, that could be a problem. I generally liked it. I don't need CDs cluttering up my house. It was nice for me. So at the end of this video, you want to know, do I recommend buying this capture card or not? And I do. This is the capture card that I use. I'm really glad that I begged Elgato for a free copy and that Wicked hooked me up with all that uh, because I use it now. I like it. I think the video quality is the best for what it does, being uh, an external capture card. If I want to put some beast inside my computer, spend a lot of money, yeah, I can do that. But this works great. It works for me. Uh, the, the recording is convenient. And if you have an Xbox, definitely. If you have a PlayStation, it should also be a definitely now that they've updated it to theoretically work with HDMI. I hope that works. Uh, I really like it. I just kind of do. It was totally, if I didn't get it for free, I probably would have bought it anyway, and I probably would have been happy with it. If you want to buy it, I put a link down there uh, to the website. You can check them out. 
And I also put a link down there to Wicked Shrapnel's review and his coupon code, because I'm not being sponsored by Elgato, and he has a 5% off coupon commission sort of sponsorship deal with them. So you can watch his video and use his coupon code if you want to get money off or whatever. It doesn't really matter to me, because I'm just happy to have a capture card. Drifter out.